Hi, our modern day system of tuning is called equal temperament. And to many of us, that seems just so intuitive how we hear the piano, how we hear guitar, how we hear all these other instruments, that we just think that's the only thing and that's always what we've used. But that's actually not the case. Equal temperament's a fairly new invention in the history of keyboard music, let alone music in general. So today I'd like to go through with you why we started using this form of tuning versus some of the other tunings that we had used for hundreds and hundreds of years. Later in the week I'm actually going to be putting up a second video that actually plays some of the tunings we're going to be talking about today so you can actually hear comparisons between them. Equal temperament is when we take an octave and divide it into 12 equally sized parts. All the notes are evenly spaced, meaning that we can play in any key and everything is going to sound proportionally the same. But this actually creates a problem. Some of these intervals are actually out of tune. And to understand this, you have to understand something called the overtone series. Really what the overtone series is, is an overview of all the mathematical relationships that can be found in a vibrating tone. I could have a string, or in this case a rubber band. And when I strike it, it vibrates, as you can see, it moves up and down a little bit. But when it's oscillating like that, up and down, it's oscillating not only at the length of the, the string I have, but it also is oscillating at different divisions. Each of these divisions are a separate overtone. For the sake of making the math seem less scary, we're going to just assume that C is 100 hertz. That means C is vibrating at 100 times per second. The fundamental note's gonna be 100 hertz per second. The first overtone's gonna be 200 hertz. The second's gonna be 300 hertz. And the next one's gonna be 400. So we're adding the size of the fundamental each time. So if we started with a fundamental of 200, the next one would be 400. And the one after that would be 600. Since notes are vibrations and intervals are just two notes, we can create mathematical ratios any interval in music. So just temperament is a way of tuning everything so it follows the overtone series. And this temperament's great. Everything sounds really natural and clean and pure when you're in one key. But as soon as you move outside of that key, the overtone series, if you just follow it out and create just temperament, will have a difference between G sharp and A flat and all the sharps and flats on the, the piano are going to sound different than each other. So just temperament is actually not a very effective means of tuning. If the overtone series doesn't work as a tuning method, we need another system that uses mathematically pure tones, but at the same time allows us to get rid of some of that confusion and those imperfections. So Pythagoras of the famed Pythagorean theorem in the 6th century BCE came up with the solution. Pythagoras created a tuning based entirely off of perfect fifths, so a three to two ratio. So you have a starting frequency, and then you multiply that by three to two, and then you multiply that again by three to two, three to two, three to two, until you've gotten all the different pitches you can use for um, music. This system is great because it preserves the clean sounding perfect fifth that was really loved at the time. It does have a couple problems though. Octaves and the fifths are all perfect and preserved mathematically. The thirds are really messed up. So the ratio of a major third in Pythagorean tuning is actually 81 to 64, which is a lot more complicated than the just temperament of five to four. The fact that the major third is out of tune wasn't too big of a problem because major thirds were viewed as dissonances and were avoided for quite a while. So if we use Pythagorean's system, let's say starting from D and we go perfect fifths going up and we go perfect fifths going down, eventually we get to G sharp and A flat, which in modern times are just inharmonic spellings of the same note. But if we actually put them together and compare them, you notice that they're actually two different tunings. This brings about something called the wolf tone. Now, if we have all these perfectly tuned fifths, we're gonna to have to have one that's slightly larger or slightly smaller, depending if we pick A flat or G sharp. And a very common thing for people to do is just pick a tuning right in between them. But we have all these wonderful, perfectly tuned, perfect fifths, and now we have one that's not quite right. And it stands out and kind of howls like a wolf because it's not in tune like the other perfect fifths are. So despite its few flaws, Pythagorean tuning was the predominant system of tuning for over a thousand years. But as major thirds started to become more popular in the Renaissance, composers and musicians started to want to fix the fact that they're out of tune in the system. So we need a new system of tuning to do that. 
This is called quarter comma mean tone temperament. And there's actually several different types of mean tone temperament, but this is the most popular form. A comma in music is the difference between two tunings of the same note or two tunings that are very close together. The most common comma talked about is the difference between the just major third and the Pythagorean major third. You need to stack four perfect fifths in order to get C to E. So since all these fifths are a little bit too big, they make the major third too big, what we do is we shorten them by a fourth of uh, the difference between Pythagorean's major third and just major third. So it fixes the major third problem, but it actually makes the wolf tone worse than it was before. Also, if you look at all the ratio of the other intervals in comparison to the Pythagorean intervals, they're far more scary. Although, essentially what they're doing is they're just only shortening it a small amount, so hearing it, it's not as scary as it looks on paper or on your screens. Since the wolf tone problem is actually worse in mean tone, keyboard inventors started making split key keyboards where they actually have a G sharp and an A flat. So if you have a keyboard instrument and it's tuned to mean tone, if you're playing in C major, the ratios are going to be slightly different than if you're playing in C sharp major or G flat. All the keys are going to actually have slightly different ratios. So that means each key starts to have its own character. And composers were actually thinking about that when writing music, which makes me think about Spinal Tap when they say the saddest key is D minor. So for using mean tone temperament, some of these keys are not going to sound as nice as others. So different tuning methods started to arrive called um, well temperament, where they tune just thirds, right, for the first key, and then they alter the ratios of the, the tuning interval they're using just to see if they can make some of the keys not sound as harsh. So while keyboardists are still using mean tone temperament and well temperament, lute players and guitar players had already solved this issue. In 1584, Galileo, not that Galileo, but his dad, proposed a system of equal temperament for lutes. So guitarists and lutists uh, in the Baroque era were all using equal temperament. As the classical era approached, um, the desire for greater harmonic freedom, being able to switch between keys quicker, being able to switch to keys that are farther away from each other, became more and more important to the music. So it became a necessity to actually switch to an equal temperament. Now some keyboardists and organists held out against equal temperament uh, until the late 1800s, but eventually equal temperament became the predominant system of tuning that we use today. The problem with equal temperament is you mess up the fifth and you mess up the third and you mess up the second and you mess up the fourth and you mess up, you mess up all the intervals a little bit. So while the other systems of tuning were trying to preserve certain intervals such as the, the major third or the perfect fifth, equal temperament doesn't try to preserve them at all. Fifths pretty close, it's a little bit flat. Another thing is, composers and keyboardists had started to enjoy the sounds of the individual keys. The fact that C sharp sounds a little bit different than C was kind of exciting for a lot of them. If you'd like to know more on this subject, there's a book called How Equal Temperament Ruined Tonality by Ross W. Duffin. I actually don't think equal temperament ruined tonality because without equal temperament, we probably wouldn't have gotten things like, you know, jazz or a lot of our modern day music that we have now, which I think would be very sad. It's good to be back and I'm glad to have a camera that works, unlike the camera that doesn't seem to want to focus right on my iPhone, which is why I haven't done a video in a while. Also, these take a bunch of time, so I'm hoping to do about Maybe, you know, one a month and see how it goes. But anyways, see you guys next time.